definitely go with the country music. Um, I live most of the year without barbecue. I hardly ever really eat barbecue, actually. Um, I do love it, but uh, on the road a lot and really hard to find American barbecue. But um, country music always calms me and reminds me of home. So um, yeah, on the road, that's key. So definitely country music. Hmm, that's a pretty good one. Um, I've always envisioned a part to, um, it's an Allman Brothers song, it's called Old Friend, I think. The beginning of the song is kind of like a lot of slide guitar. It sounds like two guitars are kind of battling. I do love a good battle, so I've always envisioned like, you know, someone like me and John or me and Griffin or someone, you know, that really pushes me in a part where the waves were really long and it was kind of like we were battling and it would go good to it, I think. And, uh, you know, like a J-Bay or, I don't know, just, so it's like a longer wave. So, um, yeah, I've always kind of envisioned that. I've never had the opportunity to have that yet, but uh, yeah, that'd be rad. Good question. Yeah, so actually, um, that's a lie. I have tried his boards. Um, I've never ordered a Pizel. Um, I've heard of other pros trying to order Pizels and him putting the kibosh on it but I have tried his boards. We've uh, became good friends over the years and yeah, we swapped boards a couple times. So that was just a lie on my part. I'm sorry. Uh, 2040, I think um, maybe there won't be tens. Maybe it'll be like really hard to come by. I think as a surfer, I mean, the, the best ride is always gonna be like a really deep late takeoff foam ball behind the spit after the blip tube ride. So yeah, I guess maybe a tube ride. That's all you can do. Maybe a tube ride or a tube ride to backflip at pipe. Like, you know, Gabriel's doing those alley-oops and it it'll do the full rotation. Maybe instead of that, it's a backflip. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Hi, Wasserman, what up? <laughs> uh, alternative universe, I definitely I have to go with the ace pitcher, I think. Just the look of that grass and only having to pitch, you know, every five to seven days. And you're basically a, a fan of baseball at that point. You're just watching most of the days. Uh, the tucked in shirt, you know, all that sort of stuff. I really like baseball a lot more than football and your body seems to be able to last longer. Um, but I guess maybe not, maybe Tommy John surgery, there's all sorts of things. But, uh, you know, throwing a perfect game feels like better than you know, anything in sports or one of the highest achievements. So being able to be that would be would be rad for sure. So I definitely go Dodgers, ace pitcher. I will never hop on the vlog train. Um, I have actually I have a really hard time even doing stuff like this. I just feel really uncomfortable for some reason. Um, so yeah, no, I will never do that. <laughs> That's a very easy one. I'm gonna have to go with trestles. Uh, it's my home break. I don't know, that's all I have to say really. I don't wanna talk bad about something to bring another thing up, but uh, yeah, I'm going with trestles. Uh, it's funny you mentioned that now because uh, yeah, the uh, waves aren't open, beach isn't open, so it's been kind of a weird time. It made me think about that actually because some places are still open like Hawaii and NorCal and things like that. So. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'd, I'd like to live somewhere maybe with a little bit more room to move. Um, but I love San Clemente, but uh, I've thought about possibly living in Hawaii just because the waves are so good and obviously the warm water and I have friends there. And then also I've thought about NorCal, like north of Santa Cruz and stuff, um, just because the waves are fun and I have friends there too. So uh, yeah, anywhere with just consistent waves and I guess a little bit more room to uh, move. I definitely have no plans to surf the Arctic, but I guess if I got the opportunity, I would think about it. Uh, I'm always down for adventure or whatever, but um, yeah, see new places. You know, we don't have much time off. We can only get usually about three months off is our off season. So yeah, I don't know if that's a good time for the Arctic, but um. <laughs> Seems like a bit of a trek, but it'd definitely be a cool experience and take some cool photos for sure. 
Hmm, that's a pretty good question. Um, I'd have to go, you know, usually I get a, maybe a good board, like a magic board for smaller waves. Last year I had a magic epoxy that I rode at Snapper and Bells in round one and uh, a bunch of other places, Brazil, Japan at the end of the year. Um, so yeah, I don't know, it just depends on the waves. I'm, I'm pretty particular with like having the perfect board for each condition. I know some guys will ride like their magic shortboard in all conditions, whether it's six foot or two foot, you just see them on the same board, but uh, I don't usually do that. Uh, last year I had a really good six one that I ended up riding at Margaret's, The Box, uh, Brazil also, uh, a bunch of places I, I kept around for a long time. But um, luckily enough, Matt shapes me a ton of boards, so the boards are kind of always improving throughout the year also. So um, yeah, you know, I, I get a lot of boards, but um, I guess if I get magic ones, I like to stash them and yeah, I will only ride them in my heats. I guess everyone would say this unless they have a, they have a, tour stop in their hometown or something. Like back in the day, lowers would have been really meaningful for me or, or up there with this one, but it definitely have to be the Pipe Masters, just getting that trophy and being on that plaque with uh, all the greats to do it out there would be super rad. So I definitely have to go with the Pipe Masters. And I, I think 85, 90% of people on tour would agree with that. Like I said earlier, I kind of have a lot of boards that I feel like um, are really specific for each condition. Uh, I don't usually tend to ride like one board in a lot of conditions. Uh, so I guess a bit of a perfectionist in that way, but um, uh, Matt's alternative boards are, have been insane. I really like my model, which is a swordfish, is a shameless plug, but uh, I like it a lot. <laughs> and then uh, the Rad Ripper is also like my favorite one for sure. It's just flies. So yeah, those two. And then I have had a, um, a MR Twin Fin for about and I almost, I said nine years, but my dad said seven or eight or something, but somewhere in that range. But um, I've rode that a bunch. And yeah, so I, between those three, those those are my kind of alternative boards. But uh, the Swordfish and the Rad Ripper, I could actually do some of my best surfing in really small waves. So I uh, really enjoy riding those. I've eaten there, I've grown, grown up eating there. So I got it wired or I definitely know what I like to order. Um, I go bean cheese, double potato, rice burrito with, uh, depending on how I'm feeling, go either way, I could go with a quesadilla or I could go with rolled tacos and always need a side of guac and a pink lemonade. But um, <laughs> I rarely eat that these days, uh, maybe after a super long day of surfing and training or long week of doing the same. So yeah, really good, but uh, it's kind of a day ender, so you gotta, you know, just sleep it off. <laughs> but um, if you eat it in the middle of the day, you're kind of hosed and on the couch for the rest of the day, but definitely good, good comfort food. Uh, scariest moment for me was, um, it would have been 2011 when I uh, got the wild card into the Pipe Masters is when they used to have a bunch of rounds of like trial, trialists and local people and like a couple QS guys and I was leading the QS at the time. And I was 17 years old and pipe was gonna be, you know, 10 to 15 foot or whatever. I don't even know what you call it, but it was second, double, triple reefing, whatever. And um, I just remember being so scared and I was like, I had a really bad performance at sunset when it was big uh, the week before. And I was like, okay, like just gotta get out there and pack one. And um, I had Lori Towner in my heat and he blew his shoulder out. <laughs> and I ended up obviously winning the heat cause he blew his shoulder out with like a five point total on us, remember me like, dang it, I have to surf out there again. And um, yeah, but it was also a, a super cool moment because I, I had Dusty Payne in my next scene, I almost beat him. And then I was like, oh man, I, you know, I can do it. Like I survived or, or whatever, that kind of feeling. So uh, yeah, it was a rad moment. And it was before actually I was ever on tour. So it was one of my first, it was actually my second tour event because I got a wild card to lowers before. But um, yeah, it was, just, it was just cool to survive it and be a part of the big show. I guess my reaction was, yeah, I have an opportunity to support my country in the Olympics and uh, be recognized as a, as a great athlete and, you know, be in the big show. Um, I originally thought they would, that the Olympic Committee would let more surfers in. Um, I was a little bit scared when they said they're only going to have two from each country. 
but um, yeah, lucky enough to make it and yeah, I'm really excited. <laughs>